Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture we are going to talk about T cell mediated immunity. Okay. So, T cell before T cell mediated immunity in last lecture or in the previous lecture we are discussing about the T cell development. So, after developing from uh, thymus they leave thymus come into peripheral blood and from peripheral blood they enter into different secondary lymphoid organs. So, bone marrow and thymus is called primary lymphoid organs and the spleen, lymph nodes, pears patches they are called secondary lymphoid organ okay, or the gall, malt all these thing. So, from thymus to blood and then from blood to secondary lymphoid organ because they are they are going to see the uh, pathogen or pathogen presented by the dendritic cells mostly macrophage and uh, B cells. And after that interaction with a machine and a for a processed antigen, they will be activated and do their job. What before interacting with because after maturation and entering into blood, what they are uh, when they are coming, they do not see the they do not see the um, uh, antigen yet. What they are called? They are called naive T cell, they are called naive T cell. Okay. N a I V E naive T cell that means they do not yet saw or see any antigen. Okay. What we are going to discuss here the development and function of secondary lymphoid organs or how actually we are going to tell what part of the lymphoid organ this T cell B cell stay priming because you need naive T cells primed by the pathogen otherwise they do not know or they will not decide what to do after seeing them who is presenting MSC 1 or MSC 2 where it is presented depending on that they, the effector function will be uh, um, decided and how they will uh, understand everything almost everything are done in this system immune system or most of the system of our organ is by signal transduction. It is either it is either direct contact of the cell okay, that one cell attached with another cell by protein protein interaction because of the surface protein of this cell surface protein of this cell interact. This is one way or this cell release something which will go and bind to the next cell and activate this one. It may be other way around this release something activate this one. So, it is both and many times it happened many times it happened that cell if this is the cell suppose this is nucleus this cell is producing some molecules. Okay. And you know already this is the supposed to be done in biochemistry class. So, this is molecule and they itself has a receptor. So, where this will fit. So, when this thing happened the this the released by cell itself and binding its own receptor it is called autocrine. Okay. It is called autocrine. Same way if the cell releasing something and binds to the neighboring cell or very nearby cells it is called paracrine. Autocrine cell paracrine nearing or neighboring cells and endocrine you know the hormone which release into the blood and work in distant place. Okay. So, most of the time this property or the effect of T cell function what will it will do how it will do uh, this kind of modification their location is either mostly by cytokines lot of chemokines are also involved to attract them and also protein protein or cell cell interaction these three is the communication between cells and here all cells like antigen presenting cells are going to present the cell. So, that cell cell interaction through TCR, MHC, antigen peptide and many others that we will see this interaction 
many other cell receptor and ligand interaction is important, chemokines are important, cytokines are important. Effect of all this who what kind of cytokines will be released and what will be the effect of that will decide actually the effector function of T cells whether it will kill or whether it will help and helping means many things that we are going to discuss in this uh, next uh, lecture or next lecture. And definitely T cell mediated cytotoxicity uh, how we, uh, it kills the cell. Okay. So, now quickly I will just go through this and you know this. Okay. You know this because this is lymph node that we have seen the cross section, this is the spleen and this is the spare patch where the M cells are there. Okay. And what why we are showing it again this blue zone is the T cell zone and yellow zone is the B cell zone. So, and it is distinct very distinctly located. So, B cell is not everywhere and T cell is not everywhere, but does not mean it is totally absent majority portion of the T cell is in this blue zone. How it is happen it comes through this all B cell T cell go there and or it is coming through this venule and it is distributed. The same thing happen here also you see this is the blue region is the T cell region and yellow region is the B cell region. So, any all the per secondary lymphoid organ where the B cell will stay where the T cell will stay majority that is decided. Okay. I am not going to go detail in this picture and who decided how it is happening again some chemokines. Okay. If you go through this slide come, uh, totally you can understand you do not have to remember the name, but just to understand or get the feelings what happened you should go that what it is saying the stomal cells are high endothelial venule. So, from where the B cell and T cell is coming they secrete one chemokine called CCL 21. Okay, that CCL 21 attract dendritic cells. Okay, that de, I mean this CCL 21 this dendritic cells are migrate to the developing lymph node. So, this CCL 1 released by the venules of that secondary lymphoid organ which attract this um, dendritic cells. These dendritic cells again secrete another kind of chemokine that is CCL 19. CCL 19 brings or basically that attracts B cell and T cell both from blood. So, now after coming here T cell stay in this region. So, both are coming by the attraction of the CCL 20, uh, 19 released by the dendritic cells which is already activated by CCL 21 or both B cell T cell are here, but another thing is coming this B cell T cell make this dendritic cells to secrete chemokine CXCL 13 in the this. Uh, germinal center. So, what happened this differentiated particularly this B cell I mean they interact between each other it is not one is doing an other. So, B cell is also helping act activating the dendritic cells here which release CX CL 13 and call all the T cell to the germinal center. So, something is attracting both B cell and T cell and then from there B cell is also going to another part. What happened ultimately what we see there is a strong I mean region which is more dense with the B cell and one region which is mostly T cell. So, they are not exactly very much compartmentalized, but their population is much more and it is happening by chemokines you know chemotaxis. So, there are some chemicals and during that chemical cell get attracted migrate to that way and that is released by different cells epithelial cells dendritic cells even uh, uh, sometimes um, neutrophils at different points, but here dendritic cells endothelial venule secrete something and uh, again activated dendritic cell attract the B cell that is why they were. So, why I am telling you do not have to remember I mean if possible definitely you can I am not saying purposefully you just forget it, but the thing is just to get an idea how B cell and T cell are localized in different part of the uh, different secondary lymphoid organ it is all by chemokines. If you remember this fact perfectly all right if you do not remember you have to remember that different chemokines are responsible for this kind of distribution of B and T lymphocytes. Okay. Now, if you see what it is saying naive T cell migrate secondary lymphoid tissue. So, that 
whatever I said it is same or similar, but here we are going to tell something different. What is happening? The T cell is coming here through this artery or through venule and they come what happened this picture I showed before also or similar picture during the basic introduction of the immunology. What happened they interact with what they will interact they will interact with the antigen presenting cell mostly the dendritic cells mostly the dendritic cells they interact if interaction is strong here they get the signal to proliferate and stay there and if they do not interact they go away. Okay. Because what happened they cannot stay all the time. So, after releasing from the thymus or after getting from the thymus they come into peripheral blood from there they coming to lymph node from lymph node they do not stay in one lymph node or one I mean in, uh, in spleen or in pear patches forever they keep on moving. So, I then what happened after staying some day for there they come back to the peripheral blood or through lymphatics they go to another lymph node. Okay. You can see it is a transferable job they cannot stay in one place for throughout the life they completely rotate, rotate between different secondary lymphoid organ. So, what happened? So, once they are staying here the dendritic cells if it is infected or brought something from peripheral tissue they are presented and if they interact they stay there attach there they multiply if those who are not interacting they are going out and once they are developed they become effector cells because they already know what to do now then this effector cells go to the peripheral blood and do their own job. If it is a uh, cytotoxic T cell it will go and find where the tumor cells or where the viral infected cells are there. So, it will go all over the body and do their own job. So, this is again a general phenomena like what is happening okay. how long it is taking I mean whatever I said how long. So, this is just a timeline. Okay. So, this is trapping trapping means at, at attaching with the dendritic cells then 2 to almost 5 days for activation. So, first 2 and half days for trapping. So, if I go back so, this trapping or uh, attachment with this it because you know there are so many T cells and everything is not possible, but their scanning is so much suppose there are 100 students in the class and if I say that I ha I mean then there is a corridor through which I enter into to take the class and then I can go out in the corridor without touching and there is no interaction ok it will take the least time, but if I say that ok I will Ha shake hand with everybody whoever in each row I will go and shake hand with everybody and see who is there by name and what they are writing or what they are doing. So, what will happen it will take a lot of time. Okay. So, they are packed up T cells and each cell is scanning each one or most of them not a, it is not possible each one, but do not just extrapolate. Um, toto in toto to the classroom thing what I said, but the thing is every time you interact with one student it will take some time. So, trapping means scanning up of dendritic cells and all possible T cell in that region and which takes two and half days it is even I mean if I can imagine it is much less two and half days if the scanning is done and they are so efficient and this scanning or trapping is done then they proliferate and activate when activation is done they release an immigration for affected T cells and to do their job. Okay. So, this lymphocyte entry into lymphoid tissue depends on the chemokine and adhesion molecule chemokine we already said right that uh, how uh, this endothelial venule release some dendritic cell release some chemokines and not only chemokines adhesion molecules are also there what are the adhesion molecules addition molecule means when I am saying when I am saying that one cell is attaching or one cell is just interacting with other what is that that means one cell should have a receptor on its surface another cell should have a ligand neophytes. So, they interact that is how they interact they do not have any hand like us. Okay. So, when two cell interacts what happened you see this is the naive T cell and when it is interacting with 
high endothelial venule ok endothelial venule has certain protein and there is not one type see this L selectin is one type of receptor and here this is CD 34 and glycam 1 these are the ligands and you see the protein part they are not interacting they are interacting with the sugar part ok carbohydrate part they are interacting. So, L selecting is interacting with the sugar. So, and the same receptor. So, we cannot have so many I mean there is a limit how many receptor can be there. So, there are some common receptor which can bind sugar we do not have that much variety of sugar molecule glucose, mannose, fructose right and you can galactose. So, not that many you can remember or name because there are much more variety in protein 3 dimensional structure. So, that is much less diverse. So, if one receptor can bind with the sugar and if this sugar I mean all glycosylated protein can have a mannose right. So, assume that all glycosylated protein or say 50 percent glycosylated protein has mannose to expose and this is receptor can find mannose. Okay. So, if this receptor can bind mannose it does not matter what protein it is any protein mannose is there it will bind. So, in high endothelial value venule it is binding with CD 34 glycam 1 the same L selectin of naive T cell in mucosal endothelium it is binding with another protein protein part is same but, uh, different, but the sugar is same. So, that will bring two cell together. So, that is what I was telling shaking hand ok it is you have to shake hand if the shaking hand the, if the interaction is very strong they will stay for a long time if the interaction is weak shake hand, but they will not I am um, uh, stay for a long time move to the next cell ok. Not only that there are, are certain more addition molecule what are that you see here this is called ICAM CAM actually stands for cell addition molecule. Okay, so I cam, B cam, mat cam, different kind of uh, cam is there, cam is cell adhesion molecule. So, this one is interacting with LFA, variety of LFA is there, LFA is there, then LPAM, then VLA, all you see two subunit, you see one is beta, another is alpha, beta, alpha, beta, alpha. So, this is a heterodimer, here the receptor is heterodimer and the ligand is there. In this case, initially what was there? Initially, the receptor was recognizing sugar. Now, the receptor is recognizing the protein part. So, these all are this is in general all this called LFAL CAM. So, this is called integrin. This is called integrin, sorry. This is called integrin. So, integrin and cell addition molecule interact. Why I am showing? Because all these what we are going to see the cell mediated immunity is cell cell interaction after that releasing something converting something. So, these are the protein which helps cell to attach with the not only MHC and TCR it will come definitely this is a one of the most important interaction otherwise it will not activate it, but before that or along with that many other interaction is necessary and these are the proteins or the receptor and the ligands which actually play the role to be bring cells to two cells together to happen the cell cell interaction and transport the signal. This is just a summary I mean not summary this is just few of this um, proteins and the this their distribution this is some super family. So, what are their ligand? So, this is the receptor and this is the ligand where they are present ok. So, you do not have to remember I am just showing you can make this list very long. Okay, you do, I mean if you possible, but there is no point to understand immunology or immune system this is fine those who are going to do research on this particular area definitely you have to remember, but to understand the immunology what you have to remember is that chemokine signaling you have to understand how what is chemokine how it reacts you do not have to remember hundreds chemokine names and their detail sometimes definitely, but not always. Similarly, here we have to remember that two kind of addition molecule one is that integrin is there which interact with the protein part another is there which interacting with the sugar part both receptor ligand interaction is very important for cell cell interaction 
that is more important to understand immune system not exactly all the names definitely you can it is very good if you can remember, but this is to understand the immunology or immune system these names, but if it is with you as a reference that is why I am showing then you can go back if you need it you can get it in the book, okay. but there are something I am not saying you forget everything something what we are emphasizing every time every now and then that, that is important you automatically you should understand what you should remember what is less important to remember not their function, but their name. What actually this thing happening actually this interaction if you see this is picture. So, these cells epithelial cell has so many variety of ligands ok you see glycam, icam, CD 34. So, and T cell also has variety of receptor here. Okay. So, when T cell is coming that is a kind of handshake. So, these are a series of cells. So, when they are going so not only they have multiple hands either side. So, I mean if you say that both receptor ligands are two hand they are shaking hand. So, in epithelial cell there are multiple hands and T cell also has multiple hands. So, they not only one handshake. So, they would like to shake their uh, hand that means, receptor ligand interaction with all one by one. So, if one hand they just shake their hand leave it then another hand will automatically catch it. So, they cannot leave the area or the venule this is bottom part is a lymph node and this is a venule. Okay. So, they when they are passing from here they cannot just go away they cannot flow away in fluid if there is like there is no interaction they have to continuously interact with this receptor and if while this interaction is happening if this interaction is very strong like that you see so many interactions three interaction together. Okay. If this thing happen then it release something that is uh, some changes are happening and this chemokine or this thing uh, and this interaction will give the signal and this signal will release something which will tell the T cell not to go anymore cross that enter into the lymph node. Okay. So, what I said at the beginning that the chemokines are releasing attracting them and they are entering into the lymph node it is not that from endothelial venule also this interaction is also very important. So, chemokine is calling them they are coming, but interaction with the cell adhesion molecule or selectin, integrin are very very important that helps them to get in and that is how they enter. After that you know what is what happened I just told you. So, they interact with the dendritic cells they proliferate and then after maturation become uh, uh, getting the role what to do or becoming affected cells this affected cells leave. So, once they get in they should have another mechanism to go out also right how they go out I am not showing the uh, picture here just for your information the exit is not by this chemokine exit is by a chemotactic lipid. So, there are some lipid molecules which attract them towards out okay. that is how they go out and come to the peripheral blood system. So, getting in through chemi uh, chemokine and getting out is chemotactic lipid because once they get in they have to go out when they mature or uh, activated activated T cells or affected T cells should go out. How they go out by lipid no chemokine is involved at least mostly the chemotactic lipid at this system it is very hard to say like nothing I mean chemokine is not involved ok. Maybe there it is not reported yet. So, better is controlled by chemotactic lipid is more um, technically right and T cell response are initiated in secondary lymphoid organs by activated dendritic cells you already know that because I told in um, when while I was discussing in the very early uh, introductory classes that the dendritic cell is very important cell for activation of T cell in lymphoid organ particularly the secondary lymphoid organ how it looks. Normally dendritic cells has lot of appendages you see so many and that is how the name is actually okay. and in this case this is a electron microscope and this is a fluorescence microscopy that what I told you and the green color 
is basically the dendritic cells and red color which you can see here much better is the lysosome. Red is lysosome, red is lysosome and green is dendritic cells. Okay. So, here what happened when they are resting condition their lysosome and macrophage is all over I mean they are I mean sorry the dendritic cells. And one thing I did not tell you during immunofluorescence microscopy there are software if two protein say one protein you labeled with red another protein you labeled with green. Okay. So, if two protein and in two different place then you will see red is red green is green. Okay. This is here. So, you see there red is separate green is here you can see and if it happen then red and green are both in the same position or same location. Red and green means suppose you um, DNA polymerase and RNA polymerase right two different enzymes both of them are present in nucleus. So, if you make DNA polymerase red and RNA polymerase green what will happen what you will see you cannot see red and green separately because both red and green both are in the nucleus. In that case in the computer screen or the software what you see is yellow. So, if two protein co localized and if we label them with green and red they are yellow. So, what we are seeing here you see all yellow that means macrof I mean the dendritic cells and the lysosome are all almost everywhere they are yellow, but here when they are coming to the peripheral blood okay, from resting in the tissue it is like that. When their lymphatic circulation they are coming you see there are so many folds slight change also here you see little part is co-localizing that means yellow, but most of the part green and red is separate. So, lysosome is not doing anything they are not doing anything because they are floating when in tissue they have a role because they have to eat macrophinocytosis and as soon as they are eating lysosome is going to fuse right. But when they are in the lymphoid tissue that means when they are coming into the say lymph node you see red is completely distinctly visible that means they are they are not phagocytosis any doing phagocytosis anymore in tissue they are when in lymph node that part is done phagocytosis micropinocytosis they had already completed that part they have processed it this processing is done here now they are presenting it they do not need. So, this is the immuno localization and what in the electron micrograph is showing electron micrograph is showing that one cell there are so many T cell are all attached. Okay. So, the appendages that means the MHC is exposed and the process antigen and so many T cells are attached. So, this is just to give an idea that when we do the experiment or if you do the experiment you will get like this either by electron micrograph or if you say electron microscope uh, immunofluorescence microscopy you will see this. But conclusion is coming that this activation start because you, we can see the T cell attached to the dendritic cells okay, that is the very first thing to happen to get activated. Okay. But in lymph node for example, a dendritic cell is not the only cell there are all other antigen presenting cells are there. So, if you see the distribution this is dendritic cells. So, if you see the color it is almost everywhere except the germinal center right. Macrophage another antigen presenting cells, but not as active as dendritic cells to activate the T cell they are the most active and most efficient one macrophage is also doing definitely. So, they are this is mostly the virus and bacteria and this is mostly bacteria or dead cells. This macrophage is spreaded all over the lymph node. So, it is not only uh, I mean like this. So, it is everywhere, but B cell only in the germinal center okay. only in the germinal center. So, this is how it is distributed in the lymph node this is the same picture and uh, in slightly enlarged form. There are 
the energy source I just told you the they um, very important, but they have very two distinct function. One is conventional dendritic cells. Conventional dendritic cells they are almost everywhere and uh, what they are doing their major job conventional this all you see they are expressing MHC 1, MHC 2 and all the protein you see a variety of protein and the integrin and all other things are there and they release CCL 19 that is just they can. So, this one is mostly responsible for activation of the knife T cell in lymph node. Okay. So, this is called conventional, but there is a another one plasmacytoid dendritic cells what they are doing they are uh, preliminary for viral infection because they handle the viral one. If there is any virus infected cell that virus infected cell handling is their job okay. and they are not and they have, they have produced and which is also written they produce a good amount of interferon class 1 interferon. Interferon will um, taught separately okay. that what it is doing interferon is very interesting you will definitely will have a separate class for that. So, I am not saying, but in general interferon helps to protect viral infection of the cell and uh, cell from viral infection. So, these particular that plasmocytoid dendritic cells are mostly responsible for handling the viral infections by producing interferon as well as by, uh, uh, activating the cytotoxic T cell, but normally they are not as good as activation of the knife T cells they are doing it is not they cannot do, but they are not as good as this. And this is for the last uh, uh, slide for today and the same I mean if you see this I mean I, I do not want to uh, repeat and read it for you, but definitely they can uh, phagocytose which if they phagocytose something or macrophinocytose something that is by class 2 that you know presented by they can handle extracellular bacteria antigen toxin they can handle bacteria by receptor like TLR they can handle viral infection right that we already know because dendritic cells normally get viral infected and if they do not get virus infected then they eat the virus infected cell and then cross present that also we have discussed during antigen presentation. Okay. So, cross presentation and transfer of incoming that is also we said sometimes if the mechanism is not known you can see this question mark here. So, one antigen is transferred to other uh, dendritic cells. So, this was within one dendritic cells and they transfer it exact mechanism how they do it it is not known it is very common in lymph node because lymph node there are certain dendritic cells stay there. So, some dendritic cells bringing samples or the uh, infection or the pathogen from outside and delivering to the existing um, uh, dendritic cells. So, all these cases that will be presented by MHC 1 and activate or the affected cell will be CD 8 cells. Okay. So, thank you for today. So, in next class we will continue the uh, T cell mediated immunity by the then.